Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Lauren. I'm a homeschooling mom of three and today I'm going to be sharing how we do our morning basket slash group subjects. Today's video is a collaboration and it is hosted by Morgan at My Little Homeschool in the Woods. This collaboration has many moms in it and we are all showing the ways that we do our morning basket. It's gonna look different for everybody. So our morning basket, when I say morning basket, I mean group subjects and that is going to include Bible, a Bible story, Bible study, science, history, and then sometimes we add in some like memorization type things. Those are our group subjects. We do them right here at the kitchen table, right after breakfast. We do have a school room, but it just works really well for us to do it right here at the kitchen table. We're all together. We've just eaten breakfast and um, it just minimizes distractions to keep everybody right here. In today's video, I'm sharing how we did our morning basket and it took a little longer than an hour just because um, it was a little bit of a rougher day, honestly. It wasn't perfect, which you all know how those days go. And then it just takes a little bit of time to like set up the camera and figure that out. And those, that just adds time to it as well. So it did take a little bit longer, but normally about an hour is average. If that seems like too long, um, I know a lot of people sometimes break up morning time into like morning, they do 20 or 30 minutes here and then afternoon or evening, they do 20 or 30 minutes there. And that is a really great way to continue to incorporate these group subjects together, but spreading it out a little bit. Also, I do want to say that I since have upgraded what well, my husband did to a morning cart because the two baskets were just getting too much, too heavy. And so this cart is easier. I put it off for years but he went ahead and ordered it for me because he was like i know you've been talking about it and you won't do it yourself so it was nice he put it together and uh, i just roll it in here so it's been working for us really well so far so that is what we're doing we also have a home project going on i'm sorry that they're not like completed and done right now but we're still in the middle of them hopefully it's going to be finished soon we just have to install the hardware and then the cabinets will go up. I'm sorry, it's not super aesthetically pleasing, but hopefully you can look past that and just see how we do our morning time. This is how we do our subject, so let's get right into it. Here are our morning baskets. The reason it takes two baskets is because I put one basket is just for the science binders for my girls. Every morning I take out what subjects we will be using for that day and I stack them on the table and it just makes it a lot easier. I just grab, I go from the top of the stack to the bottom. When I finish a subject, I put it back in the basket and it just makes it easier so I'm not rooting around during our morning basket time. Everything is just laid out for me right there and much easier to go. After I lay out our books, I also set out these two jars of colored pencils along with a small container that holds our scissors and some dry erase markers, glue sticks, things like that. It's just easier to have access to them right in the middle of the table so that we're, again, not dinging around during morning time, but it's all right there. I also give each girl a coloring book because they like to color, especially when I'm reading things like our Bible or our history or a science lesson that they're not actively doing a hands-on activity, I will just let them color so that they can listen to that while I'm reading and they really enjoy that. We begin each morning with prayer request and prayer and it's really sweet to hear what my girls' prayer requests are and what is on their hearts and just hear what is important to them. Okay, so 50 states and capitals we've started talking about. They're all, these are all categorized by region. So we're gonna learn about the Northeast and it works really well with our geography books. So we're only doing- We do our geography book on Fridays. It is the states and capitals we're learning, but during the week I do flashcards and we're learning two states a week throughout the year. Here's New Hampshire. It's this little state, the one that's highlighted in blue that state. New See how little it is, Lexi? New Concord. Hampshire. Concord. Concord, New Hampshire. Wait, why is New Hampshire? All right, let's do our mind benders, okay? Okay, okay. So Rocky and Terrible, one is a bird, one is an elephant. Rocky weighs more than, tel than Terrible. Which one is which? Hold on, give me a clue. One is a bird and one is an elephant. We don't know which one is which. We just know that Rocky, Rocky is happy. 
Rocky is heavier than terrible. Who is the bird and who is the elephant? Which one is the bird? Rocky is the elephant and, um, and terrible is the bird. Yes, very good. Okay, Lexi, if Randy were five inches taller, his height would be 59 inches. How tall is he? 59 inches. He would be 59 inches if he were five inches taller. So how tall is he now? When he get, when he grows five more inches? 54. 54 inches, good job. How many days in a week, Lola? <coughs> eight. No, not eight. Seven. Seven. Ready? Seven. Sunday, Monday, 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 and Tuesday. Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, Thursday, and Friday. Saturday. Today we went over the days of the week and the months of the year, but we also do review either my phone number, my husband's phone number, our address. We choose one or two of these items to review each day. And the reason we do these every day is because if we only do it once or twice throughout the year, the facts don't stick. It has to be repeated over and over. Now we're on to our children's Bible story book, and I always review what we talked about the day before. So yesterday we discussed Nehemiah, today we will be discussing Jonah. And you will see in just a second how I get interrupted and how just a normal everyday morning time goes in our house. We're going to be talking about Jonah today. Hey, hey what? Mom. What? Oh, I think we heard about this. Story. You think you heard of Jonah? Yeah. You sure think? You Don't be sarcastic. Got it, Lola? I thought it was, uh, what's the story called again? Jonah, you usually think of Jonah and the whale. This one in the title of Gary's Jonah and a Great Fish, okay? So God told his prophet Jonah to go to Nineveh and mm -hmm. warn the people that they're Warn the people there to the turn away from their wickedness. This. But Jonah disliked the okay, shh. But Jonah disliked the Ninevites and did not want to hear them to hear God's message. So he went we're really enjoying this Bible story book. Each page, each story is two pages, and it also includes real life pictures of what the geography looks like and what some of the artifacts and statues may have looked like. So I think it's just really an interesting book. As Jonah swam in the sea, he was swallowed up by a giant fish. For three days and three nights he remained in his belly, praying to God and thanking the Lord for keeping him alive until the fish, fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. Yeah. How do you think it would feel to be inside the belly of a fish? Do you think stinky. it would be bright, stinky? What else would it be, Lexi? It would be like smelly. Well, smelly is the same thing as And like dark. Dark, yes, be very dark. Would you be happy and like, this is a great adventure? Or would you be, how would you feel? It would not be a paradise. It would not be a paradise, no. I, I would be terrified. It's dark, it's scary, it's wet, I'm sure it's cold. Um, oh yeah, you think. We are finished with our Bible story for the day and the girls are still coloring. So we are moving on to science where we will be discussing the phases of the moon. I only do half a lesson a day because one lesson takes too long and one half a lesson is perfect. What do you think it would be like to have more than one moon? <coughs> moons. Yeah. I would see a lot of moons. Yeah, that would be really weird. But also if, like, really if we grew cool. up, like if we, that's all we've ever known is seeing like five moons orbiting around. It wouldn't be weird to us. That would be all we would know. That'd be really cool. Yeah. So we're gonna watch a movie titled The Moon. Um, we're gonna watch that video right now and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about it. And then we are going to do an activity on the phases of the moon. So let me grab my thing. Although the distance changes slightly during its orbit, on average, the moon is 384,400 kilometers from the Earth. To give you an that idea of how far it is, 
the same distance would allow you to travel all the way around the Earth, almost 10. They finish coloring? Okay. What was one thing that you found fascinating about the, that video? The dark side. The dark side of the moon? That's what I was going to say. It's okay, you can say the same thing. Lex, what did you find fascinating about um, that video? That, that um, somebody actually took pictures of other. Oh, on the other side. Uh -huh. I found it interesting that the moon actually, the moon, the moon moves a little bit farther away from the sun every year, or from the earth every year, like three centimeters every year. Uh -huh. Because there's no atmosphere on the moon, the moon does not have any weather. So that means there's no rain, there's no wind, there's no nothing. So Neil Armstrong's footprints, you can still see them on the moon today. Oh yeah, that's so right, yep. This me, oh, did you read this? No, no I read it, it in my Neil Armstrong book. Oh, the who was, but because the next sentence says, this means that the footprints left by the astronaut years ago will stay unchanged. Astronauts first, The moon phases are defined as either waxing or waning. So, wax. Uh, when you know. Oh, your hand is covering. Hi, Arnold. Waning Christmas. There you go. Good job. Okay. There you have. There's like. There you have. Like a lot of half. Full. Like half. There's like half. Like. A little bit, a lot of stuff, and then a lot, and then up, and then a little bit, and then a little bit of half. Does the moon produce its own light? Who thinks yes? Raise your uh, hand. No. <laughs> Good. No, it does not. The light we see from the moon is actually what? The sun's light. The sun's light reflected off. So anything lunar has to do with the moon. All right. Lunar. Luna. Yep, exactly. Okay, put this back, please. No, put it back. Okay, so here we're gonna look. We were looking at it. Here's the. Who put the Oreos over here Lola. from the table? Lola, why did you put them over here? Mommy did not. So for what? No, Daddy did not. So you wouldn't be tempted? Because they were too tempting on the table. Okay, so you guys guessed yesterday what our activity was going to be for today. So today we are going to eat Oreos. No, we're going to take the Oreos and we're going to make the phases of the moon, the eight phases of the moon with the Oreos. So every girl gets eight Oreos. Let me get you guys a plate. I put, I think I have 25. Do you have eight, Lola? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everybody's got eight. eight. <laughs> so using this phases of the moon sheet, you are going to take the Oreos, open up, open them up, and then you're going to um, take off the filling to make it correspond to each phase of the moon. Okay. Why can't we just eat them? Because this is the science experiment. Oh, I want to eat them. I know. Okay, so we have the new moon, the waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, and crescent moon. Good job. You did it, Lola. I Good job. Eat now. Can you eat one now? Yes. Yes. And I eat all of these. You can't eat all of them. We're not going to eat eight Oreos, but you can eat a few. Deal? Mm hmm Okay. Can I have three? Three? Yeah. Okay. And then three the next day, and then three the next day, and then three the next day, and until I, I have no <laughs> Please. I'm going to bite them. You want to bite it off? Mm, I want to eat these. The full moon. This is the waxing gibbous. Waning gibbous. Waning gibbous. 
This mm -hmm. is the third quarter, and this is the waning crescent. Look, it's like that. God is good. It is part of who he is. This morning, we read some verses about God's goodness, and it made me wonder. Sometimes it doesn't look like God is good because bad things happen. Sometimes it doesn't feel like God is good because we're going through a hard time. Now we're on to more than words. This was the beginning of a new week, and so there's always a little introduction, a story from a child's perspective. This week we were talking about God's goodness, and I just really enjoyed and appreciated the discussion that it allowed me to have and open up with my girls. And although they could not provide a lot of feedback, it's all these little seeds and nuggets that go into their brain that will stick with them in the future. Go away. And it didn't. God is still good. When our pet died and we were we and we were so sad, God is still good. When people die or get hurt or sick, God is still good. Our world is broken because of sin, but the brokenness doesn't change who God is and always will be. Maybe if I can stop focusing on the hard things or the bad things, it will be easier for me to see the sprinkles of goodness that decorate my life. All right, we're going to talk about it now, okay? God's goodness is independent on what we may be going through. This is a tricky thing that lots of people have questions about. People may ask, how can God be good if someone they love died? How can God be good when bad things happen? But we know that bad things happen because, we sin, because sin entered the world way back in the beginning with Adam and Eve. Now we live in a world where there is pain and there are tears and there are hard things that we just don't understand. None of this changes the truth. What is the truth? God is good. Yes, God is good all the time. Take some time to talk to your parent or teacher about this hard topic. So let's talk about it. Has anyone ever asked you how you can believe God is good? Nobody's probably asked you that, but have you guys ever thought, well, how can God be good if bad things happen? Have you guys ever thought that? Yeah. You did? And what did you come up with? Uh, I just thought the question. Lexi? Sometimes bad things happen as a consequence of our actions. And then sometimes bad things happen not as a consequence or as a punishment or anything like that, just because they happen. And a lot of time God allows us to happen, the bad things to happen to us, so that we can grow and become stronger in Him. How do you know that God is good? Uh, he gives us a good life, even though we, we do die, He gives us a good life. Oh, He gives you a good life in heaven, or on earth? What if He yeah. didn't give you a good life? Would He still be good? Yeah. No? If you're honest. So we can know that God is good. How do we know God is good? Uh, because the Bible tells us so. But God. even still, we know he's good because that is who he is and he's perfect. And he does no harm and he does not want to harm us. He only wants good things for us. And if bad things happen, it's for our good. Even though, again, it doesn't feel like it or seem like it and we think it's terrible and it's a punishment, it's not. It's all for our good. Here's an example. You needed some, there was something wrong with you and you needed to have an operation to fix it. And the only way that it could be fixed was for an operation. You would look at mom and dad and be like, and you were terrified of being in a hospital or going under anesthesia or having an operation. And it, you looked at mom and dad and said, mom and dad, you're the worst parents ever. How could you do this? You're not good. Well, if you loved me, you would have to and I was um, you, If you love me, you wouldn't scared. do this. You don't love me because you think, um, because if you did, you wouldn't let me be scared and you wouldn't let me be afraid and you wouldn't let me go through this terrible thing that's the worst thing I've ever been through. But in reality, mom and dad know that, you know what? Going through this terrible, terrible thing that is scary at the time is actually the best thing for you because what the surgery is gonna do is actually improve your health and does make you it, healthier and does better. It hurt to go through it doesn't no. hurt, but sometimes surgery afterward is painful depending on what kind of surgery you have. But that's how it is. God 
just because we don't see it and we don't see the big picture and understand it, it's, he's still working in our life and it makes us stronger and it makes us have more compassion on people who are going through the same thing. We can feel what they went through and it makes us understand better. So those are the reasons why God is good and that sometimes we still go through hard things. Now lastly, we're going to go on to... Oh, history. History. What country did we start learning about China. yesterday? China. China. Yes. So we Can looked we at the map of food? China. We're not going to make Can food just yet. No, not today. We looked at the map of tomorrow? China. Shh. No, not tomorrow. I'll tell you when we're going to. Okay? So we're on lesson two. We're going to talk about Anno's, Anno's China. Okay, this is the book we're going to be studying today and for the next few days. In China, there is a town called Kaifeng, which used to be the capital of the Northern Song Dynasty. This was our second day with our new curriculum, which is Beautiful Feet Books Around the World with Picture Books, Part 1. The girls were not thrilled about doing American history this year. We had already done it last year and they just were completely against it this year. So three weeks into the school year, I made a switch. We are doing around the world with picture books and they are super excited. We are learning about China right now. So this course not only incorporates picture books, it incorporates cooking, nature study, fables, music, art, poetry, history, geography, and also learning about the animals that are from these countries as well, which my girls all really love animals. They're excited to cook. They're excited to, um, well, I don't know how excited they are about the music and the poetry, but they are excited to just learn more about these different countries. So we are doing China right now. We will cover Asia, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica this year. Today we're going to begin studying Annos China, which is basically depicting everyday life in China. This book does not contain pictures on the front, but in the back you can see that each scene is set up, that you read the scene at the beginning and then you discuss it as you look at the pictures. After today's reading, we watched a video on YouTube. They gave us the link and it was a 3D a uh, lifelike version. It was brought to life for actually the World Expo back in 2010. And again, it was just depicting what life was like in China 900 years ago in the 12th century in Southern China during the Song Dynasty, what their day-to-day -day looked like, what their night looks like, their work, how they um, transported things and things like that. So it was a very interesting video to watch. Nanjing, today's Kaifeng. The scroll unfolds from right to left, moving from the countryside progressively into the end city. From his unique angle, the painter illustrates people from all walks of life and their economic activities, giving the audience a much richer perspective than if he only depicted inner city life. The Bianjing city in Song Dynasty from her predecessors was that all the street walls were removed, transforming. That's awesome, guys. So that is how we do morning time, our group subjects together. It truly is one of my favorite parts of the day. Uh, I just love the discussions it opens up between our, me and my girls and although they're still young I love that it's planting seeds and it's showing them how to think deeper and have real and meaningful non-surface level conversations but an actual conversation and I love that they're learning that from a young age. So we're really excited with our resources that we've been using so far this year. Can't wait to see how it goes for the rest of the year. If there's any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to answer them. Again, make sure you check out Morgan's channel, the playlist down below. See what everybody else is doing. I can't wait to watch their videos. If you would like to subscribe, I'd love to have you here. I love each and every one of you. 
Thank you so much for being here. You can also follow me on Instagram if you're on Instagram as well. I'd love to have you and see you over there. I just talk about like my day-to-day -day life. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you have the best day. Until next time, take care.